most of the time I enjoy reading a Spider-Man story because they tend to be more lighthearted and kind of a sense of wonder and adventure. It's usually a man or sometimes a boy who's just trying to do the right thing and be a hero. Sure, sometimes Peter does go through a downward spiral, losing people close to him while trying to never cross that line, keeping his powers in check and always using them for good. That's kind of the Spider-Man way. But there's a certain story that always stuck with me, and you can easily read it, even though it's part of an event, basically, or a mini Spider-Man event called The Gauntlet, but you can read it separate from that. You don't really have to read anything else or all that much, and I'll tell you why if you listen to this, but it's written by Zeb Wells and art by Chris Balacho, I think, but ba- ba- I always say his name wrong, but... You, you'll see his R and you'll be like, oh, this guy. This is Spider-Man basically pushed to the absolute brink, yet showing why he's a hero. And at the same time, almost a rebirth of a villain in such an interesting and dark way. The story starts simple enough with Peter doing Spider-Man-like things and being a hero. And he's actually teamed up with Black Cat here. Kind of has a little thing going on with her too. It's pretty cute. Um, And this is during the Gauntlet era, so there's a plan here, similar to kind of Nightfall from Batman, to make Peter worn out by the Craven family. At this point, we begin to focus more on Dr. Connors in the story now. If you don't know who Dr. Connors is, he is the Lizard. And if you don't know who the Lizard is, I mean, they made a movie with him in it, so come on, guys. Uh, But he was once again experimenting, and this time he was working on a serum with his lab partner and during this we actually get a glimpse into the mind of the lizard underneath connor's which you know we might have got before but here it is a deeper darker look into it it is the lizard itself the 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 creature the actual animal and it's dominant and it wants to mate and it wants to murder and it wants to be a predator and it's such a dark look into the mind of the lizard while dr connors is still in control in the beginning of this story so these are two very different styles or lifestyles that are about to collide when dr connors is pushed to his limit and unleashes the beast known as the lizard in doing so he does some pretty horrific stuff the serum that he was working on was actually used to prevent the lizard from coming out but thanks to his dumbass rich stupid ass boss it all goes wrong and now the lizard roams looking for connor's offspring to finish it off to kill the child and become the king basically of the body that they both inhabit so spider-man of course gets in the lizard's way first approaching him in the peace-loving way that he always does trying to reach out to connor's the man and it almost works but soon the lizard gets away while peter saves billy um connor's kid foster mother so he's saving the foster mother who was taking care of connor's kid while peter is doing this one of craven's family members sets billy inside an alleyway and lures the lizard right to him so what happens next is disturbing to say the least as billy cannot stop his father the dr connor's that we know who loves his son just can't escape the clutches of the lizard's just natural self this time it's in beast mode and it just wants to kill and it's a scene that really just stuck with me forever in comics because they don't actually show a lot just like certain angles of like the tail wagging back and forth or claws or blood smears but honestly it made me sick to my stomach reading this scene because you can just imagine what this poor kid is going through. When Spidey actually gets there, it sends him into a rage when he finds this boy's mangled corpse. Uh, the lizard, who Peter's like, ah, Connor, get out here. The lizard comes out all new. This isn't the same lizard that we've known for so many years. The lizard that rises is an all new monster altogether. No more dumb lizard just attacking because it's attacking, but instead a predator who installs fear into you. Primal wants like kill and sexual desire and to be dominant and to be a king, to be an apex predator. And while Spidey throws all he can at this thing because he's still very much upset, the lizard installs the fear into him so much to eventually make Peter feel like the prey and run away. 
Eventually, Peter grabs Connor's antidote that he was going to use on himself before the lizard took control. And Peter goes to the lizard and uses some on himself first before going there so he doesn't get that mind control going on. And then uses some on the lizard himself. This doesn't work really because he's not Dr. Connors anymore. So after a mental breakdown of watching his son murdered by the lizard, that Dr. Connors is just gone. And all that's left is the Apex Predator. Peter hands him a picture of his son, and in this moment, the lizard feels something new, an emotion. And now that it's smarter and more in tune with its thoughts and feelings, it feels remorse for killing a child. At the same time, the lizard is dealing with that. All his minions, all the people that he has under control who have now just become like him, primal, go after Spider-Man. And Spider-Man's internal dialogue at this point is one of my favorite ever. It's so good because it's a mix of survival with the thought of actually striking back at these people who are trying to tear him apart. While the morals of Spider-Man know who he is, what he is, just won't let him do it. He doesn't throw a single punch. He's just ready to die if he has to to make sure none of these innocent people are hurt. It's in this moment, I think, that helps Peter really shine as a character. You really understand where he comes from, relate and respect him. And at this time, eventually, the lizard does get control of himself, grabs Peter and jumps up on a building. And now the lizard has to deal with those emotions and his actions. So this is really a story about a lot of things. Uh, but what it really focused on for me, what really I got from it, was it was a story about death, rebirth, gain, and loss. The new monster gains freedom and is reborn while doing horrific things, but Peter, despite being hit with almost everything from physical to emotional abuse, never strays from who he is. So it's a nice parallel that really stuck with me 10 plus years now since it came out. I can't say that I've ever been a huge fan of the lizard, but he's truly an interesting villain here. A monster to us, but a king to his own kind. So I would recommend the story if you can possibly grab it. You can grab the Gauntlet Complete Collection now. It's a pretty good event. It's not great, but this story stands out as one of the best, if not one of my favorite Spider-Man stories just in general. And like I said, you can really read it without much background and you'll still get the emotional impact. It is dark, so be prepared for that. But if you are prepared for that, I think this is a Spidey story you should not miss out on. Go check it out.